So, it's a new update for Legacy of the Dragon. I'm very thankful that the mod creator is still around because sometimes when mods have a small break in development, they just don't get back to them. And that's a that's a real shame with many, many creations. But Legacy of the Dragon is not one of those. It is going to continue development, and I'm very, very pleased about that. So let's just start a new game, get this, uh, get this rolling, and we are going to be playing as... A, ooh, not entirely sure. An elf? Sh should we play as an elf necromancer? Let's play as an elf necromancer. Why not? That sounds like a pretty fun idea. So, as it seems right here, hmm. Can I actually, you know what? Let me just go back here for a real quick second. I just want to see whether you can... Hmm, what about a half-elf? Is that gonna give me... No, okay, so the classes are literally just this. They are they are Paladin, Fighter, Bard, Mage Apprentice, Rogue, etc, etc. And there is no Necromancer class, so to speak. But, that does give you then the opportunity to customize your character a little bit further and then see what's going on with that. So we're gonna play as an elf, as I anticipated beforehand, and we're going to be a Mage Apprentice. Now, this is going to be very cool in my opinion. I'd like to be able to utilize... and We're going to choose a Viper or whatever that is, Cobra or something along those lines, and that seems pretty cool. All right, so this is a classic name. This is an absolute classic name that I have used for every single necromantic kind of character in the past. And if you know where this is from, props to you. And, uh, well, maybe you want to check out that Fantasy Cow Radio series, because I've just told you where it's from now. Anyway, uh, intelligence. Intelligence is the way to go. We're going to go for 12 intelligence. We'll go for a little bit in strength as well, because if it's uh, kind of similar to Fantasy Cow Radio, if it is, then that means I'm going to need a certain amount of HP to make some things happen, because obviously necromancers, they may use their own life force to produce certain things and I think that's going to be very very cool. We're also going to be going for alchemy here just because this is also obviously this is a special feature so I'm going to try and explore as many facets of the gameplay as I can get my hands on because I very much enjoy doing that and I think a lot of people benefit from seeing exactly what's going on and uh, we're going to we're going to improve our throwing weapon proficiency because we are obviously going to be throwing things. So as you can see we've got the classic elf ears right there and uh, we're going to ooh hello that actually seems rather cool. I I got to say I think that seems rather cool and I think we're actually going to we're gonna, we're going to just do this. We're just going to do that. Why not? That sounds like a good idea. Now, we did start in Shattered Skull beforehand. We're going to be starting in Dreadburg. And uh, I, believe, I I think that is actually uh, the best place for us to, sta to, for us to start. Ooh, this is a... What is this? What is that? I have no idea what it is, but I have a... Oh, yes, I have a staff. I might very well die here. Uh, okay, well, th this is actually going to go pretty badly for me, I think. Because, <laughs> uh, let's face it, I don't have a huge amount of polearm proficiency. I have literally, I think, one in Power Strike. So, yeah, these these initial beginnings for a mage, pretty tricky. Unless, uh, unless your opponent does not have a shield, of course. So, there's that. And, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I don't really know what the new update changed. So do forgive me for that, but I'm sure that it's somewhere on the download page. I was just very excited to see that there's a new version. And I was just like, oh, yes, give me this. Give me this new version. Very, very excited about that. So we're going to just say, yes, I'm, I'm very excited about getting these 100 dinars as well. And hello, looters. Oh, yes, looters. All right, so let's have a look at our inventory. So I have essays on logic. Ah, we have flame arrows. Whoa, okay. They're actually very cool. I like the way that this mod creator is handling magic. Because, obviously, it really depends on the kind of mod you're playing. But I know that some mods are leaning more towards like passive books that are in your inventory and then when you go into the battle that means that you can then use the spell that kind of thing and then others and uh, I, I don't I don't really know of many that I can really 
name here. But I think 108 heroes, even though 108 heroes is not really... I mean, there, there is some magic, but I wouldn't say that it is, like, it's not high fantasy, that's for sure. I don't think it's high fantasy at all. There's just legendary weapons and all kinds of things in that mod. And it is a fantastic mod, don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying that, in general, the quote-unquote magic that you'll find in that is much more along the lines of this. But I'm wondering whether it's going to be a hybrid of the two. This mod, I mean, that is, you know, Legacy of the Dragon is, is maybe going to be a hybrid of the two two mods that uh, that do that kind of thing. Anyway, hopefully my throwing weapon proficiency will be able to... Could you could you hit someone? Yes, there we go. A little bit of extra damage. Thank you. Ah, no. Oh, no. I, t I really don't want to die here. Yes, okay. Now, bear in mind that I am playing with absolutely everything on maximum difficulty so obviously eh, you know we're not the greatest fighter ever as a mage but this is exactly the whole point of a special feature you know it gives you a good idea as to what the early player experience is going to be like especially in uh, you know with certain classes because obviously if you're playing as a mage you're going to have pretty bad combat skills and you're going to need some troops to actually assist you. Now, I'm not entirely sure. Did they really steal that much from me? I think they stole some food from me, which is actually not very good. So let's go to Dreadburg if I can. I've got to be very careful here because I really don't want to run into more of them if at all possible. Oh, look at this. You can get a Eurasian Necromancer. Ooh, I am really itching to get that. You know, I, I really, really want to get that as soon as possible. So let's see if we can maybe just recruit a couple of people, see what they level up into. And then we'll see what we can do about maybe... Uh, I don't, I, that's the thing. I don't think I can really join a tournament. Usually I would say to myself, ah, oh, you know, that's pretty easy. I can, you know, earning money is pretty easy. I can just go to a tournament and I can win that, hopefully, if I had good combat skills, you know, one-handed or even two-handed weapon proficiencies and maybe some power strike here and there. Then I'd be able to win you know, okay, you know, I'd be able to win pretty easily, uh, in, well, in most cases, it really depends on, obviously, the enemies and, and so on, but, you know, the point is, is that it would be much easier to win that way than it would be in this case, where I literally have throwing proficiency, and I do have archery as well, so even if, you know, even if I potentially wanted to use a bow, then I could do that, but I'm very intrigued as to the magical spells, and we're going to be checking those out, obviously, as well, as we go forward, I would like to be able to go to the nearby uh, Necromancer Temple sort of place. And uh, we'll see what's going on with that. But as you can see... Oh, I did not spec into Power Throw. Mmm, that, that was a mistake, actually, on my part. I should have spec into Power Throw. That was a bad, bad thing that I did there. So, yeah. If you're going to be playing as a mage, do spec into Power Throw. I think it will probably help, because technically what I'm using here, even though it's classified as a spell, it is actually a thrown weapon of sorts. And it does amazing damage, I just don't have any Power Throw to kind of assist me with it, so to speak. So, yeah, that is uh, that is my bad. But hopefully we're going to level up reasonably fast, and I won't have to worry too much about it. So, let's uh, let's go to the nearby... Hmm. Where else can I go here? They actually have a pretty large territory. And there's Skull Skullzo over there. And uh, we're probably going to want to go over there reasonably soon. But for the moment, I am just going to do the standard stuff that you do when you are beginning a game of Warband. And we're just going to run around and try and fight as many bandits as possible. Maybe level up our people. Because I would like to see what they actually level up into. I don't, I don't have enough money. Are you serious? Okay, but apparently I don't have enough money, so we're going to have to do something about that. Oh, I was being chased? No. Those are just some ghouls. Ah. I'm actually very much looking forward to using necromancy. Speaking of that, didn't I spec into necromancy? Aha. What is this? Set up your portable alchemy lab. Hmm. Oh, no, that's cool. That's cool. I... 
don't think we really have anything just yet because we don't have any recipes or anything like that. So obviously we can't do anything with it just yet. But I, th I think that's a really nice little addition there. And we're just going to sell our various pieces of loot here. I have 17. I really don't have any money, do I? That is really, really bad. Okay, I'm going to have to find some looters, I guess. I was really hoping that I'd be able to level up some of my forces before we headed into another looter party, but uh, yes, I don't have enough money to be able to do that. So that is kind of unfortunate. Anyway, I uh, <laughs> guess we're just going to have to make do with my absolutely awful... Oh, it's, it's, it's not even that bad. I mean, yeah, it's pretty awful, but my accuracy could be worse, couldn't it? I mean, could it? <laughs> I'm actually unsure whether it could be worse. Uh... Yes, okay, let's try and do some damage here then. This guy is absolutely beating me to death, which is not, not very nice of him, to be honest. But I suppose we are the forces of evil at the moment, and I'm sure they're very, very pleased about potentially killing Mr. Arcane Deathbloom, because let's face it, he has enslaved many, many of the living races in the past, and, uh, well, I'm sure many people are absolutely livid that he has returned into the land of Legacy of the Dragon. So anyway, thankfully we have so many pieces of loot here that I will be able to sell for a decent amount, which is great. There's 79 dinars for us as well. And there's another town nearby too, which I would very much like to go to. So let's go over there. Oh, there's a, there's a tournament. I'm, again, I'm still just very very skeptical about whether I'd actually be able to even do something there. You know what? I'm going to sell this book as well, even though it's an essay on logic and, and technically getting a book this early is really, really nice. I need the cash. So because it's a special feature, I'm just going to do that. And then we'll just level these guys up. And then maybe we'll be able to do something about fighting some additional looters and things here and there. But what I'm going to do is because this is a special feature, as I've said, I'm going to go to Skolzal and I will try to become a necromancer. All right, so actually quite a bit has happened, mainly because, as I say, this is a special feature, so I kind of wanted to show some of the more advanced gameplay of the necromancer, and quite frankly, it would take you a long time to get everything that I have here but it would take you a long time to do that. So I'd recommend enterprises in every single town as much as you can, and then just fighting things, selling loot, winning tournaments, and so on, and so on, and so on. Because you're going to need about 500,000, if that. Maybe maybe 200,000, maybe 250,000 or something like that to be able to afford all of the things that I have so far. And obviously to recruit as many necromancers as possible and you can recruit one of these one necromancer acolyte from the lich at skolzal for 2000 so one acolyte is 2000 that's quite expensive but obviously dependent because of what they actually end up becoming it's probably worth it because as you can see right here we have 28 of these guys they level up into actual necromancers fully fledged necromancers and then they level up into liches and as you can see they're very very powerful indeed i don't know whether you saw that but they killed trolls in a very small amount of time very very quick indeed now i also leveled up our eurasian units here and as far as i'm aware obviously because this mod is still in development a lot of things are still going to be you know changed and added and tweaked and all kinds of all kinds of stuff i think that the creator has done an absolutely fantastic job by the way so far and i i hope that they continue doing what they do because it is just really really enjoyable anyway point is these Eurasian guards and knights, they're relatively similar to what I can see the, the uh, Vegir troop tree being like. I did not level up any archers, but maybe they're going to be pretty good as well, because obviously, you know, as far as I'm aware, it does say on the, on the mod download page that the creator wanted to keep relatively close to how native actually is. And I think that's a, I think that's actually a really good idea, because that means that the balancing is going to be pretty pretty good in terms of you know people's uh people's power levels and, and things like that so you're not going to have a 
a case of it's over nine thousand and you know that that kind of thing. You're not gonna have that kind of thing happen. So it's gonna be pretty good. Anyway, uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create our own faction because I thought that might be a pretty fun thing to do. We might try it out and see what's happening. Now I have attempted ah. Mm hmm. Hello there. Examine your grimoire. Oh, yes. You can summon all kinds of things with necromancy. All right. So I'm going to summon Undead 4. We lose honor, which I don't really care about. But we have summoned. Oh, oh, oh okay. We're actually still summoning Undead. As you can see, it actually, it actually makes you static and stationary on the world map. And now I can move again. And you can see, I have summoned these undead walkers. And they do not respect the max company size that you actually have. So I'm actually wondering whether I will be able to summon more. Can I summon more straight away? I can. <gasps> do I actually... Can I actually get more than 73? Even though I don't have any space in my army? I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it will probably respect the the limit now because we are obviously at the limit so I don't think we're going to be able to no okay so that's good to know that's a good that's a good test to have because obviously if you you know if you're trying to get a massive undead army of sorts then you can very easily do that by well you know just standing there and summoning a whole bunch of undead units. And I think that that's actually really cool. I don't know how low or how high a level you would need to be. It seems like the necromancy is pretty accessible. Seems like you'll probably not need that much skill in it to be able to do that. As you can see, you can summon undead one. I have no idea what that is. Probably necromancy two or yeah, I think probably necromancy two because I'm at, ne I'm at necromancy six, I believe at the moment. Or is it seven? I think I'm at seven, actually. So I think that that is actually pretty cool. I, I think that the way that this has been done is really, really cool. Because even though I'm a big fan of Fantasy Cal Radio, the necromancy summoning and the way that that works, essentially through the menu, was not my favorite because it does consume HP. And while that makes sense lore-wise, it is a little bit difficult to balance. I mean, in terms of the player wanting to do battles, but you're trying to summon skeletons and so on and so forth. I'm actually kind of interested to see. I don't think it actually recuperates or indeed reanimates enemies as you are fighting. In other words, I don't think it will reanimate enemies after you have, you know, finished fighting and all that stuff. Anyway, as you can see, these are my stats, just in case you are wondering what they are. I leveled up alchemy, magic power, and necromancy the most, followed by pathfinding, followed by power throw, iron flesh, of course. And as you can no doubt see, I did purchase this unholy knight armor, as well as the demon knight armor, because I wanted to see what the differences were between them. They're basically the same, with the exception of the symbol on the chest piece right there, as well as uh, around the... Uh, sort of leg piece right there. So that is really, really cool. Got Black Greaves as well. They also sell those. They sell the Black Helmet too. And I also gained this, which is Advanced Shadow Belt. Uh, Advanced Shadow Belt. Now, here's the thing. There are three levels, which is, again, another cool thing about this mod. It makes everything very accessible. So even, even if you have a small amount of magic power, you're still going to be able to use the fun spells. So, so they don't lock you out of a particular spell or skill unless it's like super ah oh, you know crazy with too high a magic power so for example if you want to use shadow bolt 3 then it's magic power 7 if you want to use shadow bolt 1 then i would assume it's something like maybe magic power 3 or something along those lines probably magic power 3 and then shadow bolt 2 is probably going to be magic power 5 something along those lines and I also bought a Shadow Sword and a Shadow Shield. Now, obviously, the Shadow Shield is absolutely fantastic, 999 in its durability, but its size is a little bit on the small size, so it's obviously going to be a little bit, uh, well, not covering me as much, but that's, that's just how it goes. And then, otherwise, I did purchase an Unholy Charger as well because I wanted to show you all of what you could potentially get as a Necromancer in a legacy of the dragon and i think it's very very cool i did actually purchase the necromancer robe as well as you can see it is still pretty good considering it's a robe and it is much much lighter 
than the Unholy Knight armor. As you can see, this is 28 weight, and this is 2. So if you want to move really fast on the battlefield, this is a really good way to go about it. And also the skeleton mask is pretty cool too, because it makes you look like a skeleton if you want to do that. And otherwise, I did purchase health potions and mana potions, which enhances magical damage. That, that actually enhances magical damage, which I think is pretty cool too. Now... Let's take a look at the alchemy lab. Oh, okay, so we obviously don't have anything in regards to alchemy at the moment because I haven't purchased any of those recipes or anything like that. So that's kind of unfortunate. But what I am going to do is I'm going to try... I'm actually going to get rid of the guards here. And we'll lose 10 of these guys because I would like to try and see what these Eurasian necromancers actually are because I like to compare the stats between the necromancers that you gain from Zarol, who is the lich in Skolzal, with the Eurasian necromancers that you can get here. And these are cheaper. You can get these for a thousand. Let's have a look. 250 proficiency, 10 in power throw. How much in magic power? They have 6 in magic power, 7 in necromancy. That's actually really good. They have 65 HP as well. Level 40. That's really, really cool. And what do we have here? Okay, so very much less very much less and these are 2000 but obviously i believe the eurasian necromancers do not level up no they do not level up so they are a base very powerful unit that you can get for a thousand in comparison to getting a unit that can be upgraded for two thousand so it's obviously up to you what you want to go for here this guy is also not as powerful as the eurasian necromancer and if we take a look at the lich that is obviously going to be more powerful, but only by a very small margin of a little bit of HP and a little bit of proficiencies there as well. So if I were to choose, I'd probably decide to go for more Eurasian Necromancers, to be honest. Because even though they can level up into Liches, you get their full power almost immediately, which I think is a really nice way to go about it. Anyway... What we're going to do is we are now going to besiege something, and I don't exactly know what to do. I, I'm going to go to Tradefoot, actually. I'd like to go to Tradefoot and actually see what's going on there, because I've never been there before. I would like to be able to see what it's all about. Aha. I see. There's a shop here. I'm wondering what they sell. Do they sell something? Uh, hello there. Do they sell something cool? Okay, so you can buy health potions, spell books, holy books. You can basically buy everything that you could ever want here, I suppose. Let's buy some grain, just in case. There is a tavern here and a guild house. What, what is the guild house all about? I don't know, but I suppose we'll find out very, very shortly. And uh, maybe if I can find an NPC here. I mean, the amount of work that has gone into this is basically, I, I think, pretty staggering for such an early version of the mod. And... It's crazy. I, I feel like that's crazy because uh, the creator's obviously done a fantastic job, has really put a huge amount of passion into this as well. So let's have a look. They say the tournament's a men's game. Well, I beat the hell out of the men out there. Soon I shall leave for a tournament. However, I need to prepare before setting on the road. You look very dangerous, so don't hit me, please. Uh, come take a good look at a sword swordsman better than you. Ah, shut up, old man. Oh, and here is the, the old man that beat us in the previous episode. Let us not speak about him. All right, so that's actually pretty interesting there. You can obviously just buy some things, whichever you like. And we are now going to declare war against one of these factions so that we can actually experience some of the siege combat. Personally, I don't think we're going to be seeing anything too unique because as the creator themselves states they're trying to keep relatively similar to the way that native is and i don't blame you i think that's a pretty cool i think that's pretty cool i i, I like i like native in general there's just a couple of things about it that are obviously a bit flawed but i mean what game isn't flawed really i mean you know, there are very few games that have zero flaws oh that is an orcish horde if ever i saw one 111 units right there that is kind of crazy. All right, so we're going to go to Bjorgoth, and we will try to take it. I don't know how many they have here. Hmm, 337. I think I might actually be able to do this. I could go into a tournament. Shall I try going into a tournament just to show you how I fight now in a regular situation? Maybe that would be an idea. I can also use my Shadow Bolt ability. Whoa, that's a 
Wow, that's a fast ability. Unfortunately, I am not hitting very well with it because my... Whoa, okay, hello. That is kind of crazy. I like it. I, I do like it, but my obviously my throwing weapon proficiency is still awful. So, you know, do bear that in mind, that my accuracy could be much better if I increase that ever so slightly. But yeah, you can actually see there that we, we're still, you know, we, we, we can do a lot of damage. An absolutely huge amount of damage with my Shadow Bolt ability. And I just killed one of my own guys. Terribly sorry, friends. <laughs> well, you can see here, Nordeg. Nordeg Champion Fighters. Hmm. That's... You, you should definitely keep an eye on those guys. If they are what I think they are, then you really should keep an eye on those guys. If you don't want to go down the magic route, then maybe those Nordeg fighters could be could be what you're looking for. Anyway, let's do this. Let's besiege the town. I have a zero engineering skill, so even if a vassal does try to attack me, well, we'll, we'll try and deal with him, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, there we go. Ah, defenders are coming out. I, w I would probably not say that that's a good idea for them to do so because they're probably going to get murdered very, very quickly, and or I hope they're going to get murdered re relatively fast, because obviously, bear in mind that, uh, well, Fantasy Caradia in general did have a bit of an issue, a bit of a balancing issue with mages in general. They obviously did make it that magic was very, very powerful indeed. I'm actually going to die here, I think, because these guys are swarming me. Or maybe not. I might survive. Nope, nope, I actually got killed by those forces right there. Ah, well... Yeah, oh yeah, and there, there doesn't seem to be diplomacy, so there is no battle continuation or anything like that, which is maybe a bit of a shame. I feel like that might be a bit of a shame, but yeah, it seems like a town is going to be a little bit too harsh for me to be able to take. What is that? Oh, hello. Right, okay, let's, let's, pull, let's, let's pull some soldiers behind. I didn't know I was still moving, but what is that over there? Well, it seems to be a... Ah, it's a, the southernmost settlement in Nordegard, where most raiders who haunt a Darien coast sail from. Interesting. Okay, so this is actually going to be a pretty cool place to be, I suppose. You can buy health potions and mana potions here, of course. And then you can go into the... Ta Hello there. Do you want to join me? It is disrespectful of lowly raiders to think they can be a match for a giant in the arena, and I punish them for their lack of respect. Well, uh, would you like to join me? Would you like to join me, sir? Because I could definitely use you. Face me in a tournament and you will understand what I mean. Ooh. Is there anyone upstairs? Well, I, I gotta say, that's actually very, very cool indeed. But what I am gonna have to do is earn some renown and try to increase my party size, and then we will sweep across Edarian with the utter ferocity of the undead. But for now, that will be it for this episode. If you'd like to check out the mod, and I highly recommend doing so, there is a link in the description. And I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.